I'll start this story off in a side of Avid Media Composer. Okay, so come join me. So I wanted to start the story talking about a few things that are new in the BCC Blur category. Uh, if you take a look at the left-hand side of my screen, specifically in the effect palette, a number of these blurs, the BCC Plus blurs, have gotten a lovely speed enhancement, uh, not to mention um, a series of presets that you can now utilize to do some quick looking effects, um, whether it be in Avid or any host that supports uh, Continuum. So let me start off, I'll actually just build this effect that's already here in my timeline from scratch. Uh, I'm applying a directional blur. And here in my effect controls, let's just hop inside the effect editor and see when you know, you're trying to come up with a potential look. Obviously, I'm not gonna wanna have this entire image blurry but we can look from and uh, sift through a series of presets here. And once we discover one, uh, very quickly start to adjust some of the properties or parameters directly inside the effects editor or hop inside of, of Avid to do some finishing too. So I'll start off with a, a strong diagonal width here, number eight, and let's apply that. So we got a nice uh, quick response time there with the blur. And in terms of, of properties, I'm gonna bring down the blur Y uh, to nothing and just stick with blur X and also increase uh, the blur value here, also doing it numerically inside of Avid. But in order to see a little bit of my image, we've been talking quite a bit about Mocha, but I wanted to mention Continuum and Pixel Chooser. So, if you head down to this section of the effect and then turn uh, Pixel Chooser on, while we do have the ability to go inside of, of Mocha, we also have some quick options directly uh, that we can use inside of the, your interface. And in this particular case, I just want a really simple shape to use to uh, have the subject appear within the blur. So let's, let's hop inside the mask section in order to do this. You'll see just a series of, of handy shapes available. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose the ellipse. It's the opposite way from what I want it to be. So I'll just invert that mask. And here with the feather, increase that to a value of 80. I'll also take advantage of just not having a, a complete ellipse. I, I find this tool pretty easy to use when it comes to making an adjustment like this, not to uh, mentioned just taking down the, the scale mask in order to kind of end up with, with a blur look. Let me feather that a little bit more. So this is just one of several mask tools that you can use in conjunction with the blur effect. And if you need to, you can always go into Mocha and take this a step further for those complicated uh, situations. Uh, and sometimes even just uh, situations where you want to go beyond the simple shapes. So that's one blur. And before I, I start to show this next blur, let me first of all head inside my bin and open up a new sequence. Uh, this is my favorite blur out of the group that's been added. It's smear blur. We can still find that directly inside the blur category here uh, as the BCC plus smear blur. And I think what I love about this blur in terms of experimenting with it was really that there's a, a few different ways of being able to use it outside of the box um, besides what it's intended for. So right now I get a pretty nice blur. You can see here on the image and I'll just do something really simple with this one where I'm gonna take the center Y value for the blur and just scrub up on it a bit. So I try to get it in the center of the tower right here. When experimenting with this, I uh, there are some values down here, but one way to see what's happening is to actually bring down your smoothness value at the top of the effect to see that this blur is made of a series of steps. So I'll head here and we'll take a look at and see three steps. And we can see that even clearer if you start to play with the scale start and the scale end value. In fact, by scrubbing down the scale end and maybe increasing the scale start, um, we should start to see a bit of a stepping value if I change the smooth amount here for how the blur is uh, being created. 
And through like experimenting with this, I was able to kind of create a few different effects here, specifically with the blur and almost creating these dissolve based effects where we have a, a blur on one side of the image and then through uh, the replication of an image also have the dissolve of a, a subject coming in. So this is just a simple keyframe of those properties. If I hop back in to my main composition here, sorry, my main sequence here in a second, if I go to the bin and head to my window, here was another uh, example of that. And just reflecting on the smoothness value being brought down to a very low amount, you now have sort of a, a mixture between a, a blur effect with a sphere, a smear, but then playing around with a few different values inside of here can get you some pretty interesting transitions with blurs combined with dissolves. And one of those that I found was this fall off value here at the bottom. So just to bring uh, John Dickinson into this for a second, I remember uh, back in the day, you used to have a website on, um, on After Effects experiments where you would take a few different ex obscure uh, effects and try to combine and experiment with them and bringing it back to even looking at SAP where you have an effect that might scream out to you, hey, this looks like lightning. There's so many different things that, and directions that you can take it on with it through experimentation. And I think the same is true with some of these BCC plus blurs. Okay, I have one more thing to show here. And some of these effects, this effect that I'm about to show in this new sequence, are um, a ton of different color looks, which was added to the Continuum family uh, in the, a few releases ago. So if I head over here to the effect palette again, and let's head into the film style category. And I'm just gonna apply BCC plus looks to this clip. To really show number one, if I head to the effects editor, the absolutely massive amount of presets that you have available to you for color correction looks. And not only that, but the ability that you could take one of these looks, you could tweak it, and then in any application that Continuum works in, we can then share these effects. Not to mention additional, um, additional data information, which I'll get into in a second. Now, before I do, let me hop inside of here and just choose a, this black and white flashback look. I'll apply it. And new to these BCC plus the, the actual color correction effects in particular, the film style category, you're gonna take, uh, I'm gonna head down into pixel chooser once again, and this has been added in this release. So I'm gonna choose and turn this on again. And once again, I can go and launch Mocha and do a track. But in this case, what I'd like to do is try to limit this black and white effect specifically to just the subject and bring back in a little bit of color of the green within the trees. And there happens to be under the, once we activate a pixel chooser and head into the matte section, a few different ways that we can grab onto the channel of a clip. And from that channel, whether it be the Luma information, red, green, or blue, try to limit the effect to a specific region. In my experimentation, I'm just gonna choose the blue channel here. And notice that the matte types that I am, I'm working with are levels right now. But you have a, a bunch of different ways of where you can try to draw a mat out, whether that be threshold or range. But I'll stick to levels, and I'll start to uh, lower the white level here. Now you could start to see how, uh, by the black and white level adjustment, not to mention some pre-smoothing, I'm able to limit that effect to just a specific region of the image. So this is something that I, uh, being able to kind of pull a color key using some of these effects, I think is super useful, especially with the entire um, BCC plus looks or if you're going to film stocks. Now let's continue this because I, when we talk about all of these suites of plugins, one of my favorite things is just this, the ability to work cross-platform and the story seems to continue that way where 
opening up Sapphire to, to Photoshop and then being able to share workflow there in terms of motion graphics. And the story is, is the same with Continuum. In this case, I'll just add BCC plus film stocks and apply it to the image. I'll go back to the effect editor so we can take a look at a, a bunch of beautiful, beautiful effects here that load up very quickly. And even with starting with a preset, uh, this time I'll choose Cali type and I'll limit making some changes here to some of those properties directly inside of the effects editor. And if you're new to this, keep in mind that there are multiple ways of comparing your clips and changing the view of how that effect is impacting your clip or clips that you've applied them to. I'll come down to the color correction section and just make a slight temperature change and a slight change to the saturation. And in these changes, let me see if I can make something a bit more visible by heading down to some, uh, some sharpening as well as entering a value here specifically for the vignette. There we go. So you can see I made a few changes there. I'm just gonna head to the top where you can see I'm clicking on this little paper icon and I have the ability to create a custom preset. And this is your way where I could take this effect which is gonna be loaded in a custom section and from that I'll give this a name, I'll be the author. I'll call this Nix Cali type. I'll choose OK. And we can see that it's saved down here now in the presets, but you do have the ability to actually find out where this is uh, stored on your system, this custom preset location. And now that this has been saved out in that my film stocks, I'm just going to apply it to the clip. And all of a sudden, I'll head over to Resolve. Here we go. And what was that the effect? That was BCC film stocks, yeah? Let me apply that to the clip. Head to my effects over here. And in the effects editor, uh, do a search. Let me just do a search for, and there it is. Obviously I'm on the same system right now, but there are ways for you to discover uh, where this is on your system, where you can share it with someone else who is on Resolve or in another host. And that's uh, what I wanted to kind of show uh, inside of, of Continuum. And it picks up from the beginning also, the, of course, being particle illusion and some of those big fluid dynamic changes. And summing up uh, the fact that we now have MFR support as well as M1. Very cool.